Good morning, church, and welcome to Sunday, August 8th. Barb Baker will start us off with Father, I Adore You. Sunday's devotion is from the Upper Room Discipline, written by Ken Nash. And our scripture reading is John 6, 41 to 51. And then the Jews began to complain about him because he had said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. And they were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? whose father and mother we know, how can he now say, I have come down from heaven? But Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me. And I will raise up that poor person to go on up on the last day. It is written in the prophets and they shall be all taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of this world is my flesh. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Are you familiar with the term group think? It's when a person forgoes personal responsibility and critical thinking to join the consensus of the group. Jesus encounters this in its fullest form as he offers himself as the bread of life, the very spiritual nourishment his listeners were starving for. But they do not stop to pause and ponder the remarkable relationships that they are invited into. One person remains, reminds the group that Jesus is merely the son of Joseph. making it easy to simply slip into one collective idea and as a result, miss the miracle standing before them. I am life. I am a gift from heaven. I am provision, a sustainer of life. I am nutrients and necessary and fulfilling. Even when Jesus explicitly said it, it was still unbelievable to those who heard it. However, I wonder how many got it. How many grew excited, hearts racing, arms covered over goosebumps? How many felt this excitement but left anyway because the group questioned, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Scripture calls us to be in community. It's a core blessing of the church, filling our lives with meaningful relationships. However, John's story reminds us that groups aren't always filled with wisdom. Because of that, Jesus emphasizes the personal nature of relationship with him when he says that anyone may live forever as they partake of his body. Intimate moments with him are critical aspects of our spiritual journey. Enjoy the time building up your own personal discernment. 
Soak it up, learn, then engage with a group. Take some time today to reflect on what the Spirit is revealing to you. Are there areas of groupthink that are slowly creeping in? Gossip that you've joined with or group grumpiness that changed your demeanor? Bigoted behavior you were engaged in? Hurtful jokes you've laughed at? Let us pray. Jesus, thank you for community and personal moments with you. They are a gift from heaven, allowing us to walk in that great intimacy with you. Amen. Our closing hymn is, Let Us Break Bread Together, verse 2. face to the rising sun.